the release of John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum, it is time to rank all three John Wick films. And to do this, we're gonna need... Guns. Guns. Lots of Lots guns. Lots of guns. How's it going, everybody? What do you think of my suit? Do you like it? I love it. Actually, it's not as cool as John Wick. It's not bulletproof or nothing like that. And actually, I don't even have a jacket to go with this. But still, I wanted to wear something nice in black on black, kind of like a John Wick style, when I went and seen John Wick 3. And yeah, I had a good time. I really enjoyed myself wearing this. Me and my wife both dressed up, actually. She didn't really wear black, but still, she looked awesome and very, very sexy. It's between us. Don't tell her. But even though she'd love to hear that. Anyway, moving on. Now, how I rank movies is simple. Usually, you would do a worst to best, which that's not the case here because I love all three of these films. Absolutely adore all three John Wick movies. So we're here to just do a ranking based on how much I would rewatch one over the other. That's how I do my ranking system. I would rewatch one maybe once or twice and then watch another maybe a thousand times or a million. So that's pretty much how it goes. I don't know how you guys rank them, but that's how I usually do it. Unless, again, it's a best to worst or worst to best. I always say that backwards. But yeah, that's usually how most people do it. But I do it differently because I'm different and that's how I am. So deal with it. Okay, so first of all, let's get started. Let's just get into it right now. We're going to start with number three. Coming in at number three is John Wick Chapter 2. Now with John Wick Chapter 2, it was a great sequel, great follow-up to the first John Wick. It added to the character. You find out a little bit more about John, but you also find more about the Continental and how the group of assassins work in this underground like hotel and all this shit and all these different people. And we get introduced to new characters and it's just bigger world building. That's what the second one's really all about. It's about building up this world, finding out more about these assassins and how they operate and the different things that they do and you know, kind of what happens if you mess with these guys and if you do something wrong. Because once you're inside the Continental Hotel or on Continental Grounds, you cannot conduct any sort of violence. Whatever you have against that person that you're after, you have to wait until you're outside of the hotel, off the property. Otherwise, you suffer consequences. And you kind of find that out in this sequel, but you don't really find out more until the third one. But we'll get to that later. But anyway, yeah, man, this was a great sequel. All the fight scenes that were great in the first John Wick are even better here. They're better choreographed, they're more longer and more intense, and like you get to see more of like what's going on, and that's what I love about this franchise is like each one, it just gets better with the fight scenes, with the action, and that's the case here. It's a great film, it's a great sequel, it does have a lot to offer, and there is some really great action in here and some really great fight scenes. And of course, you get more John Wick, and you cannot go wrong with that because John Wick is fucking awesome. So number two, coming in at number two, is John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. God, man, this movie had me on the edge of my seat from start to finish. Oh my God, it's just amazing the things that they were able to pull off in this film. I mean, you have fucking John Wick riding a motorcycle, fighting ninjas with fucking swords in a fucking freeway chase. Jesus, man, like I don't know how they pulled that off, but it looked fucking phenomenal. And it just, just you get to see John Wick fighting a dude with a book. I mean, just different ways. Like you thought Jason Bourne was cool when he fought guys with books and got shit on John Wick, man. He beat the shit out of this one guy and I couldn't believe the amount of things he was able to do with a book. And then the knife fight. I mean, there's so many. John Wick uses horses to fight people. I mean, you've never seen that before, have you? I mean, if you have, let me know because I have not seen that before. Oh, okay. I need to calm down. I'm getting a, little, getting a little hot here, but damn. It was just awesome. Like, the action in this movie was just so fucking good. It was very fucking good. And that's what I love about this franchise because it, it reinvigorated the action genre. It kind of secretly did it with the first movie, but it really kicked it into high gear with the third film. And damn, man, I, I love it for that because... That's what the action genre needed because, you know, usually you get these action movies with over-the-top CGI and fucking just, you know, they're they're stale. They, they don't offer anything, and that's what I love about John Wick is just, like, it's all practical. There might be, like, some CGI blood here and there or something, but, like, most of the fucking stunts are practical and everything's just, you know, it's John Wick. It's fucking Keanu Reeves doing his own stunts, 
And that's something, again, you don't see too often because most action stars don't do all their own stunts. They might do 50% of them. Like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, he doesn't do all of his stunts, but fucking Tom Cruise does 100% of them. And then you got Keanu Reeves, 50 years old. Both dudes, Keanu Reeves, 50 years old. Tom Cruise, 60 years old. Both of these guys are doing their own shit, and they're kicking ass with Mission Impossible and John Wick. I mean, two of the biggest action franchises right now. And John Wick is just doing something different. He's doing it on a more grounded level compared to Tom Cruise jumping off fucking airplanes and shit. But still, from what he's doing on the ground level is fucking phenomenal. And I cannot wait until Chapter 4. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Chapter 3 was awesome. I loved it. It might not have ended the way everyone wanted it to, but I don't give a fuck. Give me more John Wick. I could go 10 John Wick movies if Keanu Reeves has got it in him. I'll watch every single damn one of them. Bring it on, baby. Yeah. Finally, number one, which you already know, is John Wick, the first film. The one that started it all, and you're probably wondering why it was the number one. Well, because, man, this is where it all started for me. This is what introduced us to this character, and... What could have been a fucking directed DVD movie turned into an awesome fucking film, man. Because think about it. John Wick goes after these guys that killed his dog. Now you hear that out loud and you're thinking, what? What? Okay, no. I'm not going to watch that. I know. It sounds crazy, right? But there's more to it. It's because John Wick's wife gave him that dog to kind of help him grieve for her death. And that's what kind of adds to the story and about the first John Wick is you got an emotional connection to John Wick and the dog and his wife and everything that's going on there and you feel for this guy you want him to get revenge you want him to go out and just kill these motherfuckers and that's what he does and he's fucking good at it and plus you get these awesome moments in this film that just make you scared to death of this guy because you really don't know anything about him other than what the bad guys are telling you or telling the other characters like you don't want to mess with this guy because, yeah, he's John Wick. And they're like, who the fuck's John Wick? It's like, well, have you ever heard the story of the Boogeyman? Well, he sent John Wick to kill the Boogeyman. Boogeyman? Well, John wasn't exactly the Boogeyman. He was the one you sent to kill the fuck. Yeah, man, that's, that's one of my favorite quotes of that movie, probably of all time. It just sends chills down my spine every time I fucking hear it. I love it so much, man, and I just love this character. Just the way, just this could have been a one and done movie. John Wick could have just been a one and done revenge thriller action movie, and it would have been fine, but no, they did sequels, and I'm very glad that they did because I never expected the world building and the places that they're going to take him, and even more into the future. I can't wait to see what they do with this guy because you always want to be with him. You always want to see what he can do next, who he's going to go up against, who he's going to fucking destroy. And that's what's great about this franchise, and that's where this started. It started it all, and I'm very happy for it, and I'm very excited to see where it goes next. Oh, Jesus, man. I, just, I love this franchise so much. All right. Take a breather. It's all right. All right, guys, that does it for my ranking video of all three John Wick films. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this ranking system and how do you rank movies. Do you rank them from worst to best or do you love all three and just put them in a certain order kind of like I do? Let me know down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. And as always, if you like this, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when I upload a video. And until next time, Baba Yaga.